everybody, welcome back to It's Too Late to Apologize Book Reviews. I'm Stella, and today I'm going to be doing a 2022 reading review. So, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite books of 2022 that I read. Might get into a little bit of um, my goals for 2023 and where some reading projects uh, ended up and where I am on some of them. So, let's get started. So just like last year, I want to talk a bit about my reading projects. I have a few reading projects on the go. I want to read all of Shakespeare's works. And this year I did, I read uh, 16 of Shakespeare's works. Yeah, 16. <laughs> the favorites of these that I read this year top seven of those in a sort of countdown to my favorite Shakespeare plays that I read this year. The bottom of this seven would be Richard III. R really good. Just happened to be the bottom of the top that I read this year. Then we have Richard II, followed by All's Well That Ends Well. I really like this one. Then Measure for Measure, Henry V, Henry VI Part One. And my favorite Shakespeare that I read this year was Taming of the Shrew. Absolutely loved it. So good. If you'll remember, I was also reading prefaces to Shakespeare by Tony Tanner. So I've read more of them. Uh, see all my post-it notes in there. Really enjoying uh, Tony Tanner's prefaces. It's it, really good, especially I found uh, in the histories, but in all the Shakespeare plays that I had read and I read the preface to, really gave a lot of historical context and the differences between what was true historically and dates and events were changed in Shakespeare's history plays and just some historical context to the time in which Shakespeare was writing and how that impacted the plays at the time, because obviously we're reading these in a much different context as a modern audience. So I've actually um, really enjoyed uh, this this prefaces to Shakespeare by Tony Tanner. So I will keep you updated as I go on. And then uh, a couple honorable mentions like I did do last year also. First honorable mention is going to be Mary Stewart, Queen of Hearts by Jeffrey K. Hill. So disclaimer, this is a writing friend of mine. I edited and helped work on this book, uh, this novel with him, this is uh, a friend of mine, independent author. This is a historical novel based on Mary Stewart, Queen of Scots, and it focuses a lot on um, the religious strife uh, between France, Britain, and Scots and how confusing everything was at this time, historically speaking, power-wise and religion-wise, and the shifting alliances and all those sorts of things. And this is the story of, of Chastelard. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. You know, and you've read a name so many times, but you've never said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> this is based on uh, the true story of Chastelard and Mary, Queen of Scots. And it's sort of this very mysterious instance in history that there, there isn't much known about what happened between these two people in history. And so um, Jeff, Jeff took all potential writings and historical facts that he could find and then extrapolated this type of story to encapsulate all the facts, but then also read between the lines and try to fill in the gaps in what we know in the history. And I think it turned out extremely well and I'm, I'm extremely proud of this book for him. So highly recommend. And honorable mention number two is going to be Cervantes's Don Quixote. So I haven't written a review for this, but I think I'm going to include it in a discussion that I have been percolating in my mind at a future date. It has to come together a little bit further, but stay tuned. In no particular order, top 10 books I read this year. Starting number one, Raymond Carver's 
A New Path to the Waterfall. So this is a, a collection of poetry written by Raymond Carver just before he passed. I believe it was published posthumously. There was some really great, beautiful poetry in here. I find myself struggling to get into poetry. So it was my goal this year to read some more poetry. And I, I've read the most poetry I've ever had this last year. I actually saw Brandon over at Brandon's Bookshelf uh, talk about this. And so that is actually why I picked it up. And I, I really enjoyed it. And there were some really beautifully written stories in some of this poetry. And I think that's what I like in poetry is when it's telling a story. And again, I, I struggle with poetry. So uh, the, the struggle continues, but a new path to the waterfall. All right, next is going to be number two, Herman Hesse's Siddhartha. Oh, I did a review of this. I'm going to link it in the description box below if you want to check it out. Um, I really enjoyed this read. It was a very simple, quick read. This was my first introduction to Hesse. I think I will read on um, with Hesse. Uh, I, I enjoyed this one and I thought there was a lot of depth in the simplicity of the writing. Next is, I've spoken about this one a few times, uh, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I have a review for this one. I'll link it in the description box. Uh, absolutely love this. It's right now currently one of my favorite books of all time. It's so, it was so vicious a novel. It is just like such a stark shock of reality in this the romantic swing of the era that this book was written in and definitely turned some heads in its time that it was written. And I think it still is today. So Madame Bovary. Next. Carl Jung's The Four Archetypes. Absolutely love this. Nonfiction. It, <laughs> I have so many sticky notes sticking out of this and I really feel like I need to reread it because there, it, there's, it's so dense and there's only so much that you can, you can pull in on a first read through. Since reading this, have purchased a few more Jung books to be able to explore his his theories deeper so that I could understand and unpack what's in this a little bit deeper also. If you are interested in Jung's writings at all, I highly recommend uh, The Four Archetypes. It is extremely intriguing and it makes you look at so many things in such different light. I, I, I couldn't believe it, but absolutely fantastic. Next, William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Absolutely love this. I did a review of this. I'll link it in the description box below. Absolutely love this. I never read this in school. I know it was assigned reading for a lot of people, but I only came to this as an adult. And it is quite a young uh, reading level. Uh, so, you know, one might think uh, that would reflect poorly on the, the book, but it, it definitely isn't. There, there's so much that Golding is saying in this novel, and he did it in a really succinct way like there there's so much that this is saying in such a small little book like it's impressive I highly recommend next is Jillian Flynn's Gone Girl I'm gonna write a review of this it's still to come look out for it absolutely loves Gone Girl it is one of my favorite books of all time right now absolutely love Flynn's writing I love her deep psychological dives into these characters that she creates in these really strange circumstances that they find themselves in. And I just find it so incredibly interesting and intriguing. And as I've said in other videos, I really hope she's working on something new because I, I would love to read it. Next is José Sermago, The Gospel According to Jesus Christ. So this is my first Sermago. Don't know that this was the best place to start with his writing. And so I'm, I need to read more. And if anybody has a recommendation as where to go next or where I should have started with Sermago, let me know. Leave me a comment. Even though I don't think this was the best place to start, I was really intrigued by the way that he wrote this. I'm going to write a review on this and it's it's going to be coming up. This book is 
attempting to tell the story of Jesus's life through how Jesus may have perceived it. And at times it's like satire and, and incredibly funny. And at times it's very dark and asking these really deep existential questions. And I, 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 I enjoyed it. I, I, so anyways, I, all to say that a review is coming. I was lucky enough when everything opened back up again and uh, travel was convenient. I was able to travel to Porto and I went to Livraria Lelo in Porto and got this really beautiful edition of um, José Sermago's, the, the same book in Portuguese. And in Portuguese, the title is O Evangelho Segundo Jesus Cristo. And uh, yeah, so this is this really beautiful edition by Livraria Lelo, which is honestly the most beautiful bookstore I have ever been in, ever. I'll put a picture right here. The hype lives up. Next is going to be Cormac McCarthy's The Orchard Keeper. I did a review of this one also. I'll link it in the description box below. This was a book that after I completed reading it, I was just like, what did I just read? It, very little of it seemed to make sense or was coherent at all. But then when I went back and wrote the review of it, I found I really enjoyed it and, and was connecting the dots. And through piecing the puzzle together, my appreciation and love of this book grew. So The Orchard Keeper, Cormac McCarthy. Next is going to be Kazuo Ishiguro's An Artist of the Floating World. I did a review of this also. I'll link it in the description box below. Absolutely love this. I've uh, gushed about this in uh, a few videos now, so I'm going to spare you listening to me gush again, but absolutely loved Ishiguro's writing in this. And I have read The Remains of the Day, but but it never made me want to explore more of his writing, but this really makes me want to explore more of his writing. So I'm going to have more Ishiguro on the horizon. And last but not least, Cormac McCarthy's Outer Dark. I'm currently writing the review for this, so it's going to be my next one out. But it again, um, with Cormac McCarthy, it's just... I'm on this journey of wanting to read all of Cormac McCarthy's works, and I'm currently reading uh, *The Passenger*. But *Outer Dark* it's 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 one of those books again where it initially made a lot more sense than let's say *The Orchard Keeper* did. It was much more straightforward sort of story, but there is so much as as I'm writing the review, I'm just seeing that there's so much to it that I didn't initially grasp because of the way McCarthy writes, there's so much metaphor. And a lot of times you don't even grasp the level of the metaphor that he's using unless you do try to piece together the puzzle of what he's saying and what writing. So this is again, one of those, those moments where after I started looking into all of my annotations and trying to piece together this puzzle that my appreciation for it has really grown. So review to come. <laughs> okay. And so challenges, I had talked a bit about my Shakespeare challenge, talked about my, so that is well on its way. I have 10 more works to read. So I'll be able to finish up my Shakespeare challenge this next year. I also am reading all of Cormac McCarthy. So I am four books deep. I am on the fifth right now. So that's on its way also. What else is there? I also had a challenge to read all of the Bronte's works. I did not read a single book by Bronte this last year. So that one fell by the wayside a bit. So hopefully this year I'll uh, pick up that challenge again. And then the other challenge is that I have this Penguin Drop Caps Collection Edition. And I'm sure you've seen it. It's all these colorful editions of these books. You can see it. Uh, oop. <laughs> you can see them here on my shelf. So I'm working my way through this, uh, this collection. I'm about halfway through right now. So there'll be more of those to come. I read seven of these this year. So making progress. And I think that's probably all the reading challenges that I'm going to take on until I finish one. <laughs> so 
excited for next year's reading. I've read 40 books this year, so I met my challenge, my reading goal again, and I'm really happy about that. So how was your reading year? Did you meet your goals? Have you increased your goals for next year, decreased? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe so that more people can uh, join the discussion in the comments and find some great books. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.